vaccines are specially made to produce immunity to a pathogen in the body. By pathogen, we mean either viruses or bacteria. And the idea is with this immunity that's produced by vaccination, when the person encounters a virus or bacteria that the vaccine is to work against, then they have protection against the development of disease. The currently available vaccines are either against viruses or bacteria. In the case of viral vaccines, we can either use uh, a weakened form of the virus, as for example in the case of measles or one of the new influenza vaccines, or we can use killed virus to make sure that the subject doesn't get disease but still has enough of a stimulus in order to produce immunity. For bacteria, uh, the situation is almost the same, but we don't use living organisms. Instead, we use either the killed bacteria or we use um, a detoxified toxin that some bacteria produce, or in the last case, uh, we sometimes use the sugar coating of bacteria to mimic what the bacteria looks like in the body so that the host who is vaccinated then can produce the right kind of immunity. For the tetanus vaccine, for example, it's the toxin that produces the bad consequences of disease in people. Therefore, when manufacturers are making a tetanus vaccine, they start with the toxin and then they detoxify it and put it through all the chemical tests that are necessary to show that it's pure, potent. They do animal studies with it to show that there aren't any particular problems associated with that lot. And then they bring all of that information to the FDA who then can recertify that this is a safe product to put into people. Vaccines are really one of the most incredibly effective tools we have in public health in terms of disease prevention. People who are alive today don't remember um, what the situation was in this country before the development of our common vaccines when polio, diphtheria, tetanus um, were causes of many hundreds of thousands of cases each year in the United States and, and many, many deaths. Um, the best example we have now for pediatricians and parents who have children and are considering immunizations is the effect that the Haemophilus influenza vaccine has had just in the last 10 or 15 years on the incidence of Haemophilus influenza infections. This is a very serious infection and as late as 1995 could cause 15,000 cases of meningitis in the country each year with maybe four to 500 deaths. And just in the last year, for example, now that we are immunizing with this new version of the vaccine, there are less than 50 cases reported annually in this country. So that's been a very recent demonstration of the wonderful efficacy that uh, vaccination can provide. All vaccines can cause minor side effects. These can range, for example, from redness and swelling at the injection site to fever, uh, all of these symptoms generally last only for a few hours or at most a few days and can be easily treated. There are some cases with certain vaccines where there is a more severe side effect, for example, persistent crying following pertussis immunization, but even that we now know does not cause lasting harmful effects for the child. This is very important though to put in context with the benefits of vaccine and when you're comparing the risks to remember that while the vaccine can cause these minor reactions, what you are preventing is disease that can cause much more severe consequences for a child or an adult.